Thank you, Ron, and good morning, everyone. I really am eager to speak with you today about Keysight's technology leadership. In fact, uh, during the course of three decades in this industry, I can honestly say I've never felt more excited about our company's prospects. Now, for some quick perspective on me over the course of those 30 plus years, I began as an electrical engineer out of Northwestern, started work doing test engineering, later moved into R&D. Along the way, I won a fellowship, earned a master's in computer science. I did my thesis work in neural networks, which is a machine learning technology that's finding many applications today. Later, I moved into some strategy and business leadership roles, one of which was leading the company's oscilloscopes business for about six years. And as you heard Ron describe, this was after the period of time when he returned to the company, transformed that business from a money loser into a growth leader for us. During his tenure, we doubled the revenue of that business. After he asked me to take it on, we doubled it again. And all told, we tripled the operating profit dollars and we tripled the market share. We applied several strategic levers to make that happen. One of them was technology leadership. Now, in my current role, I head up Keysight's central technology teams, both hardware and software, and I also work very closely with Ron on Keysight's strategic plan. Now, to that end, when Keysight became independent, we had to take a fresh look at our strategy. As Ron indicated, our mission had changed. Within Agilent, our mission was to produce cash. So the life sciences part of that company could execute M&A and could grow the firm. Keysight, as an independent company, is committed to growth. And so we had to ensure that Keysight's R&D was set up to deliver that growth. So what did we change and what have we accomplished? Well, first of all, as you've heard, we increased the overall rate of R&D from about 12% of revenue exiting Agilent to over 15% today. Now, some of that was due to the acquisitions. Some of it comes organically. But it's all focused on first-to-market innovations that enable our customers to grow, because that will help us grow. Number two, we've increased the efficiency and the effectiveness of our R&D through the industry solutions group structure that Ron described. And I'll say more about that in a moment. Number three, we've expanded our leadership on all three dimensions of our differentiated value proposition, hardware plus software plus people or expertise, which together creates insight. No one brings the overall strengths than Keysight does to meeting customer needs. And finally, we've executed very successfully on the software growth initiative that we described in 2015. We've grown our annual software revenue by over $125 million. We've increased our software staffing dramatically. And recently, you may have seen on January 30th, we introduced a breakthrough new design and test software platform called Pathwave. And I'll describe Pathwave in more detail in a few minutes. Now, drilling into how we've transformed R&D, this is that same diagram you saw from Ron previously where he emphasized go to market. It's also made for big changes in how we approach our R&D. Previously, we were based on divisions between 10 and 16 of them, depending on the exact time frame. Those divisions were focused on products, mostly feature-rich boxes. So products like signal generators, spectrum analyzers, oscilloscopes. Each division had a general manager. Each division had a profit and loss statement. Each division was fed by a relatively fixed amount of R&D. And each division's teams engage with customers on a mostly independent basis. It did work, especially during the times when customers themselves 
were primarily interested in individual products. But it was complex, as the diagram indicates, and it was inefficient, both for us and for customers. And it really ran out of gas as customers became interested in full solutions rather than in point products. As you've heard, now we're structured around four industry-focused solutions groups. These teams are fully empowered to work with customers to get them the solutions they need when they need them, regardless of which hardware and software components may be required. Each solutions group works with a primary center of excellence where the teams have deep knowledge on key technologies, such as high-speed digital measurements or wireless communication software. And they can also draw on the capabilities of other centers of excellence as needed for the solution. The centers of excellence, in turn, are fed by the central technology teams. This really is a very powerful system for us. And here are three of the ways that make it so powerful. Number one, Keysight Labs. Keysight Labs is delivering the game-changing breakthroughs, the innovations in technology that aren't available anywhere else on the planet. Number two, the centers of excellence. These teams in their deep competencies are producing the components, the hardware and software building blocks that flow into solutions. And number three, the industry solutions groups. These teams are working incredibly closely with customers to define and deliver the solutions. Overall, this is a setup that's built for scale and it's built for speed. And it enables us to be not only the first to announce solutions to the market, but the first to get them into customers' hands. And this is making Keysight more relevant to our customers and to their ecosystems today. And it's why we're winning. Now here's how some of what I've been discussing uh, turns into full solutions for customers. And this gives you some perspective on the difference between a solution and a mere product. We can see in the middle that hardware is still very central to our solutions. But then increasingly we're layering more and more software on top of the hardware as well as more and more services. Uh, driving all of it is a very deep understanding of market trends and customer needs that comes from active leadership of standards bodies around the world and from hundreds and hundreds of customer engagements that span months and years and in some cases even decades. And it all comes together then into a workflow solution, which is something that addresses the customer's productivity or cost challenge in the development and deployment of their own end products and solutions. What might that look like? Well, that might constitute several pieces of hardware, perhaps in different form factors, additional software for analysis, for automation, and then services like startup assistance or technology refresh to protect the return on that investment over time. These are rich solutions. They require the insight that comes from hardware and software and people. And I'd like to drill into each of those elements a little bit now. Here we see a typical measurement process. The measurement begins with hardware. We connect to the signal and we digitize it. That turns it into information that's flowing inside a computer system. Keysight produces custom chips, custom modules, and custom interconnects to help with that process. Interconnects are ways of moving signals between chips and modules and circuit boards. We source those technologies in-house uh, through our fab because it gives us differentiation and it gives us advantage in performance and in time to market. And if you think about it, you can't be 10x better than what you're measuring, as Ron described, if you're drawing on the very same technology stream in the very same time frames that your customers are. You have to be ahead of them. And so this is what we're set up to do. If we look back at the diagram now on the right side, 
Once that information is digitized and is flowing in the computer system, then software of various types is used to analyze and interpret it. Keysight has many software tools for helping with that part of the process. Now, you may have been surprised to hear that we have a half a billion dollar software position. We're working to make more of that software revenue flow as recurring revenue due to subscriptions and support contracts. That's a win for customers who need CapEx relief. It's also good for Keysight and our investors because it helps smooth out our revenue flows. So that's a little on hardware and software. In fact, they're both set up to help drive gross margins performance and revenue performance for the company. And then the third big element is people. They're the human technology leadership that we have. We have industry-leading technologists by way of our 3,000 engineers strong R&D force around the world. Over 1,000 of those engineers have master's or PhD degrees, and many of them have more than 20 years experience in the industry. So this is a force that would be very, very difficult to duplicate. We have thought leadership through our engagement with leading universities around the world, through the standards bodies, and through industry consortia that we participate in. And we are deeply engaged and embedded with market leaders in all regions and at all levels of the company, including up to our CEO, as you can see here. This also includes our incredible field force around the world that Mark Wallace will describe further. What we hear time and time again from our customers is that when they need a trusted partner to help them solve their toughest business challenges, Keysight people are the ones they seek out for technology insights. And speaking of our worldwide presence, here's a view that shows some of the places we have R&D around the world. Now, for clarity, I've just called out 10 of our key sites. And you can see that it does span the entire world. You can also see that the expertise sets cross both hardware and software technologies. If we look over to Beijing, for example, we can see that there's deep knowledge of wireless communication software. This is obviously very important for us heading into 5G. We locate our R&D teams close to customers because that helps us be totally on top of the requirements in those areas. It also helps us respond quickly when the customer needs evolve. We can respond on the ground, in local language, with the local insights. So again, this is part of our unique differentiation around hardware plus software plus people. So I've just given you a brief run through on how Keysight's R&D is configured today and how it's delivering competitive advantage. Now I'd like to talk about some of the other things we've done, followed by where we're going. First, we've carried out M&A to gain capabilities faster than we could by doing everything ourselves. And we've expanded our served market by three and a half billion dollars in the process. Now we do this with financial discipline when the return on invested capital is greater than our weighted average cost of capital. And Neil will talk about that in more detail. Here you can see some of the acquisitions we've made in each of the solutions groups. Now ICSI is clearly the largest. ICSI brought us capabilities in network test and visibility and security that are playing a major role for Keysight going forward. We've also picked up capabilities in automotive battery and power system tests and in different types of services such as multi-brand calibration and antenna test. So M&A is one of the tools that we're using to get the growth that we've committed to. We've also widened our competitive moat on both the hardware and the software aspects that I discussed. On the hardware side, we've taken a look at the requirements for new applications like 5G and automotive radar test. We've invested in our fab to improve the performance of the transistors that are used to build the custom chips and modules. 
We've made those devices faster and we've made them lower noise to achieve the right level of performance that's required. We've also invented new interconnect techniques that aren't available anywhere else in the world. The fact of the matter is this fab and the dozens of PhDs who are associated with it constitutes a technology capability that's the envy of our industry. It gives us tremendous technology benefits as well as business benefits, like lower cost of goods and like the pricing power that comes from having performance leadership. On the software side, uh, we've stood up a new software design center in Midtown Atlanta, which is a hotbed of technology and innovation in this country today. We did that in partnership with Georgia Tech, the US's largest producer of high caliber engineering graduates in a school that has Keysight design software embedded into parts of its curriculum. So we're sourcing graduates who already know some things about the major tools that are used in our ecosystem. They also know about new school development techniques like agile development, which means developing the software based on a series of very fast iterations and refinements. And that team is playing a huge role for us in the new software platform work involving cloud-first design, data management, and data analytics. So what these elements have in common, both the hardware and the software, is they're examples of where we've chosen to vertically integrate on the technologies and on the capabilities that give us differentiation and competitive advantage. Now, the software staffing story is particularly dramatic. And this one really is a major mover for Keysight. Between the acquisitions of Anite, followed by Ixia, and the establishment of our Atlanta site, we have increased by more than 65% the number of software engineers working at the company in just the last three years. This is a huge part of our transformation to a software-centric solutions company right here. Another huge part is the work that we're doing on our new software platform, and I'd like to talk about that now. To set this up, here's a view of the major life cycle phases that most of our customers go through in the development and deployment of their own products and solutions. It starts with simulation, where the design exists purely in virtual form inside a computer. Then a physical prototype is made, and it has to be validated. Typically, those first three steps occur multiple times until the desired level of functionality and performance has been achieved. Then the design goes into volume manufacturing, and ultimately it gets deployed into the field, where it's often further optimized over time. Now, you can see that different types of software are used for these different uh, phases of the process. Now, some of the software crosses a different life cycle phases, but in no cases does it cross all of the life cycle phases. The electronic design automation or EDA software, for example, it features very prominently at the front end of the life cycle. Later on, test software becomes more central. Later on, still, a data analytics software. And by the way, the red boxed areas here are places where Keysight has strong positions positions that contribute to that half a billion dollar overall software business that we talked about. The EDA software, for example, is used by two thirds of the high performance communications designers around the world today. But here's the issue with this process that customers talk to us about. The tests and the information that's used in performing tests at each life cycle phase is not easily transferred to other phases. Why is that? Well, the tests are performed differently, the data is in incompatible formats, the specifications are inconsistent. I witnessed this firsthand during my time as a test engineer. It makes for a lot of repeated work. Things have to be redone and re-implemented. At the end of the day, it means longer time to market and higher cost. So this is a big unaddressed need that's out there, and it's therefore 
a major opportunity for Keysight. And when you hear us talking about accelerating innovation, this is the life cycle that we're talking about speeding up for customers. And Pathwave is the way that we're doing it. Pathwave spans all of the phases of the life cycle. It standardizes the data formats and the user interfaces on the constituent pieces of software. It's scalable, so it can run standalone or in the cloud. It's open, so it can be extended. And it has data analytics built in with more coming in the future. Now, I want to be clear that it's early days on what will be a multi-year effort for us. Pathwave was just introduced on January 30th. Over time, however, dozens and then hundreds of Pathwave-enabled applications and solutions will come to market. It is the foundation for Keysight solutions that accelerate innovation, and we're very excited about it. Here's an example of Pathwave in action today. Now, this is for an early 5G uh, design. 5G, as you know, is really an umbrella term that encompasses many new technologies. The one that we're interested in here is called beamforming. What beamforming involves is changing the radiation pattern on the antenna of the mobile device or the base station. So instead of emitting radiation uniformly in all spatial directions, it focuses the energy in one primary direction at a given moment in time in order to create a higher performance link which is part of the promise of 5G. It does this by using antennas that are composed of multiple smaller elements and feeding different signals into those individual elements. So it's very complex mathematically and electronically. It definitely needs to be simulated before it's built, and it definitely needs to be validated after it's been prototyped. Keysight makes tools for both of those parts of the process. Our EDA tools have capabilities for doing the simulation. You can see that over at the bottom left of this image. And then we also make hardware and software tools to assist in the validation of the actual performance. And you can see that in the middle image. In that middle image, over to the right of that image, there's a wireless access point mounted in that stand. To the left of that image, there's a couple of horn antennas that are making the measurement. And to give you a sense of how the beamforming, I would say, looks, it's not really visible to the human eye, but we can show a mathematical visualization based on the measured data. I would draw your attention to the lower right uh, image, and I'm going to animate this bitmap to give you a sense of that. Now, I've slowed this down by more than a 1,000 times just so we can see it. But that's what's involved in beamforming. Very, very dynamic, very, very complex. And what the Keysight tools allow is comparing those measurement results and sharing the simulation parameters back and forth between the simulation and the actual validation to speed the overall process. So again, this is just one example over time, there will be many more of these as we continue to build out the platform. Now, if we pull back from that example, back to the 30,000-foot view, here's our strategy going forward. We're going to continue our investment in software because of the critical role it plays in solutions. Ixia's capabilities in layers two through seven of the stack play a big role here, and Mark Pierpoint will discuss that in more detail. Our Pathway platform, our Atlanta team, as well as our other big teams in Romania and Beijing, for example, also play a big role. We're going to continue our investments to lead in 5G. The higher frequencies of 5G require new chips and new modules. The multiple channels of 5G require more multi-channel measurement capabilities. We're developing those technologies now. Another new technology is over-the-air test. Over-the-air test means you have to test without a physical connection to the device, using only the radiated energy. This requires entirely new measurement methodologies, new standards, 
Keysight is in the process of creating those today. And Satish will talk in more detail about 5G in the next segment. As some of you may have heard at the time of the Ixia acquisition, our two companies had largely complementary technology portfolios. And so we're working on ways of leveraging those competencies in both directions. Mark Pierpoint will talk about a couple of early successes that we've had there. And then finally, we're continuing to seek diversified growth in other markets beyond communications, including the high value automotive opportunities and other services beyond repair and cal. And Soon Chai and John will speak more about those. To close, a key site has a global, very powerful R&D machine. It's been refactored to meet the needs of the customer first solution centric company that we are today. We continue to further our differentiated position around hardware plus software plus people creating insights. And we're accelerating our progress in software, especially with the Pathway platform playing a major role. It really is a very exciting time for us to be the technology leader in our industry and to be making a difference with our technology leadership for our customers and our investors. Thank you very much. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Satish Dhanashekaran, the president of our communication solutions group. <laughs>